We are joined by a special guest here at the table to talk all things artificial intelligence. Reid Hoffman is here. He is Greylock partner, co-founder of Inflection AI. He's also co-founded LinkedIn. Today, he's on the board of Microsoft. And last month, he launched Reid AI, his own digital twin. It's very nice to see you, sir. It's great, and it's great to be here in person versus Reid AI. Well, hang on, because you don't know this, <laughs> or maybe you do know this. Um, I did an interview with Reed AI myself, and so I want just. Do you want to talk first, so okay. people can just see what you? Well, okay, so people know what you're like. <laughs> this is the real Reed. The, this is the real Reed. We okay. haven't yet got holograms. And then I, right. I have a lot of questions for you, but this is a different question that I asked Reed AI. Okay, so you studied 20 plus years of Reed's writing, speeches, and interviews. What podcast interview do you think Reed conducted? most impressed you? That would be the podcast Reed conducted with Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb on Masters of Scale. Brian shared his journey of transforming a simple idea into a global phenomenon. Reed's insightful questions about overcoming challenges and fostering creativity made this episode inspiring and instructive. Reed AI likes the real Reed Hoffman, <laughs> it seems like. Yeah, it's a little too praising, I think. It, it makes me cringe a little bit. It's like, I'm insightful. It's like, you okay, don't need so to say that. Tell the audience, how did you create this? Well, so uh, we use off-the-shelf technologies. Okay. Um, so video from Hour One, uh, audio from Eleven Labs, and then ChatGPT is a special bot trained on 20 years of my writings. And so it was all essentially what anyone could do going to these three commercial entities. Okay, and from a processing power perspective, how long does it take to create even the, so I asked the question, and then I know we had to do some work behind the scenes to create the answer. How long did it take to process, for example, that 30 second or 40 second answer, you think? Most of it's creating the video. Um, everything else is closer to, not still quite real time in the way that we have the, you know, kind of 200 milliseconds of real time interaction. Uh, but the video, and the video is probably, you know, 30, 40 minutes. 30, 40 minutes for that 30 yeah, seconds. even 20 now, but yeah. And so what was the biggest lesson for you in, in doing this, and what does this spell for the future in your mind? Well, I think um, part of the thing that we need to look at is we, we've made this technology. It's available through open source. There's a bunch of different things. So this is the future that's coming. We need to figure out how to steer it, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to do it. It was interesting for me because I literally just said, all right, what could be positive in this? And like, for example, it gives me language superpowers. I gave a speech at the University of Perugia and then released Read AI, giving it in Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, Hindi. I saw myself speaking Chinese, very strange. But that kind of human connection right. is, I think, actually, in fact, really possible here. And it's one of the positive features of what is otherwise known as deep fake technology. And how scared are you of the deep fake side of this? Well, if I could wave a wand this year and not have anyone be able to generate video or audio defects, I would for political stability and not having uncertainty, you know, on that, including just people claiming things are defects when they're not, uh, as, as part of this. Right. Do you think that there is a solution to that? A um, technological solution? People talk about tokenizing things. Yeah. People talk about crypto being part of this. People talk about stamping it. But is that even plausible? Uh, it is plausible, and there is definitely technological solution that creates a kind of like, what is the real providence of right. this? Like, Reed is really here talking with Squawk Box, and there's a certificate that, that, that asserts that, that goes, okay, we trust that certificate. Right. I don't think that the ongoing battle of, I have a video technology that can tell you looking at if it's deep fake or not, right. That's an uncertain ground. How far are we away from making this feel really real? So, Becky, when you f sat down, Becky was saying maybe the, that it didn't the, sound the, exactly the like it. The point at the T's sounded Ooh. a little yeah. flat. It didn't yeah. have the same inflections that you have. I will say the first answer that I saw sounded closer to you. Yes. Um, we're months away from... Just it, months. It, yes, it, because it improves. Right, so the lip syncing gets a little better, the gesturing gets a little right. better, the ability to go soft or loud or aggressive. All of that's just improving at the pace that software is improving. Can, can I just ask, though, I mean, you, you mentioned politics and the problems that that could pose in a year like this. Warren Buffett brought it up at his annual meeting for Berkshire, just the idea that you could have a fraudster who emulates somebody like him and gets a scam started to steal people's money. I mean, it seems like there are massive problems that could be unleashed by this. Just on, on daily, everyday life, scamsters get much better and... 
it's already so easy to fool people into giving you money in so many ways. Well, one of the things that you should always look at when you think of technology as a problem, also think of solutions. So for example, when you think of scamsters uh, that, are, that are kind of using things on the phone and so forth, what if you had an AI assistant that was yours, that was listening on the phone saying, oh, this one sounds like it could be dangerous. Hmm. Ask the following question, or, or it's kind of in defense. And so I think we will figure out the technology defense, and we just right. need to do it at the right time frame. We've had a number of guests actually recently talk about how, when you think about AI, especially from an investment standpoint, that the chip makers are clear winners, NVIDIA clear winner, less clear who the winners are in the software universe, mm -hmm. and whether all of this either becomes commoditized or something else happens. What is your, what is your gamble on that? Well, I have, and, you, and you're, at my, you're a board member of Microsoft, <laughs> yes, so you yes. have, you have. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I, I have a seat at the table, yep. both at Microsoft, you know, co-founding Inflection, a variety of AI investments from Greylock, a stack of things. Look, every single thing that uses a computational item, and it's not just your right. phone, not just your computer, but also like your speakers and your cars and everything else, everything is going to get massively more intelligent. Right. So the product, the benefits in productivity, the benefits in quality of advice is going to be huge. Oh.